<laughs> Hi guys, it's Monday. Hello. <laughs> Happy Monday to all of you. Um, looking up 504. Stuff. We at least we're consistent. Consistently 504. Made. Maybe we are, we're meant to be on at 504. Hey Jody. Hey Leida. How are you? Um, guys, it's gonna be really good today because the cat just puked. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. So, this is real life. That's why people. it's 504 because we we're, yeah, literally watching our cat puke all over the floor, watching and then cleaning it up. And mm -hmm. then I wash my hands. So, you're welcome. <laughs> anyway, uh, what, what did we call this today? Wake up. Yeah, this is um, really good. It's time to wake up, people. It's kind of like part three of the prophetic push, I guess, but we're, it's called a wake up. Yeah. Prophetic push. It's the season that the body of Christ is in right now. Um, yeah. God is calling people to wake up and rise up and um, take action. That's what, I, that's what I'm hearing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be so excited. Yeah. Okay. I need to wake Hi, Carla. Up. So yeah. So, so what do you got? Well, so coming off of last week, we talked about Ezekiel, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wrote here, Ezekiel was in a dire or dead situation. Mm -hmm. or it was it was trouble. Um, dry bones. That's what we were bones, talking about right. last week. So Ezekiel thirty-seven, you can read for yourself. Mm -hmm. But basically, Himself. all of a sudden, God. Uh, starts he tells Ezekiel to start speaking to these bones yeah and um, he says prophesy to them and, and God didn't do it he told Ezekiel to so Ezekiel mm -hmm. prophesied to the bones and then long story short the bones they started coming alive the bones turned to skeletons and the skeletons um, muscles and, and things started forming on the skeletons and, and it came to life it was about Israel but yes really it's 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 showing us that um, it's about us too yeah our own lives Yes, how important it is for us to speak a prophetic word, mm -hmm. to uh, speak the word, number one, yeah. but even speak the, 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 the now word that's bubbling out of you. Right. So, so just to recap the last two weeks, when we talked about push, push represents pray until something happens mm -hmm. or prophesy until something happens. So you just speak it out, what mm -hmm. God is telling to you, the promise Promises of God, speak that out and pray it uh, through until you see it come to pass, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pray. Push. What are you laughing about? Nothing. I'm laughing at my own face. Oh. I was trying to. Um... Laughing at my face. But uh, so Ezekiel saw a dead situation. Now, this mm -hmm. is really important because um, I just think that we really sometimes, many times, only pray when there's a frustrating situation right. or when something tough is happening. There's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. praying when something tough is happening, but right. um, I think that uh, we, we like you don't have to have something dire happening around you, but mm -hmm. I do think it has to be in you. Like there has to be a frustration in you, right. something that you don't necessarily like even happening in you. Like you mm -hmm. know that yes. something needs to change. Um, maybe you don't like this or maybe you have a hard time forgiving or whatever, but you know, you know something needs to change in in you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, I would say that that's kind Good. of a, a dead situation that God wants to wants it to come alive. And really, He's talking about even your dreams, like um, hope or mm -hmm. the things that um, the things that that God has, gave you maybe long ago, but but just kind of um, fell by the wayside, or that you are in a situation where it, it there's there's just trouble. So it's not bad. Actually, these are good things. Whenever you, whenever you're in those things, it's never fun to be in them. Mm -hmm. But it gives us a chance. And I've said this before. It gives us a chance to pray a prayer that we've never prayed before. Right. Because usually, we pray only when tough times hit. Mm -hmm. We're not praying, you know, right. in good times. We're praying yeah. usually um, yeah. just during the tough times. So then a miracle can happen that you've never seen before. So uh, I have a friend who's going through something really difficult right now, and. When you're in the middle of it, sometimes it's really hard to see what God is doing. But uh, maybe grab a friend <laughs> who and ask them to stand in faith with you because um, this friend, you know, just said, you know, I'm really trying hard to believe. And, and I was like, oh, 
God's giving me the opportunity to have a huge miracle right now. Like this is worse than it's ever happened to you. Like this, these circumstances or whatever, but that means that God uh, is going to cause you to pray something like Dan said that you've never prayed before. You're going to be so desperate for an answer, something that you, it's impossible. Your situation is totally impossible for you to fix or to turn it around. So God has to do something and he always keeps his word and he always is true to his character. So he's going to come through and something huge, a huge miracle is going to happen just yeah. because it forced you is forcing her to pray in a new way that she's never prayed before. Yes. So it grows your faith at the same time and it always turns out better for you. Yeah. So Ezekiel, Bad for the devil. Ezekiel sees a hopeless dead situation. God yeah. tells him what to do. He says, start prophesying, start speaking it. Yeah. And so that's really what this whole thing is about. It's, it's, um, it's really praying until something happens mm -hmm. and don't give up, but keep going. So I wanted to get, get us now to new, well, you can read that. Yeah. It says in, um, Ephesians 5, it says, uh, I'll start in verse 8, For you were once in darkness, mm -hmm. but now you are light in the world. So live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists all in goodness, righteousness, and truth. Mm -hmm. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention that what the disobedient do in secret. So, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead, and then Christ will shine mm. on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. But mm. he's talking, th this comes in all around this um darkness and all around you know there's words in there that we're we're, yes. we're seeing like man it's it's tough um, mm -hmm. but you are a light you, you you have something so powerful yes but it needs to wake up so i wanted to just quickly go to uh, mm -hmm. mark 4 or luke okay. 8 or matthew if i'm gonna go to mark 4 mm -hmm. it's the same story maybe in, in a few a few different um uh few different um, not translations, but a few different uh, recordings from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So they're a little oh, yeah. different. But um, Mark, so you've heard this before. Jesus is teaching uh, them about the word and, and the seed. And, and, then, um, and, then, and then all of a sudden something happens. Uh, verse 30, 38, it says, On the mm -hmm. same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. The disciples, Jesus said to the disciples, now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's, that's wisdom. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But, but he, Jesus, was in the sterns asleep on a pillow. And so the disciples awoke him and said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? That's mm -hmm. a dire situation. Yeah. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said the sea, peace be still, and still, and the, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Yeah. Now, the whole, the, one thing I want to say is that, again, another dire situation, and, but they did something right. Is I just said this, they just woke up the word. So I think yeah, in, in a, Jesus is the word. Yeah, he is. You got to wake him up. Woo! So li literally, we are called to wake up the word. Mm. Um, like stir it up on the inside. Stir it up. Like, go get it. Wake up word. Go get it. You got it in you. You got it in you. You just got to pull it out. <laughs> you do. Go get it. Like, <laughs> Dig it out. Another, this is, here's another interesting thing to think about. There's another time in the book in, in, in the Bible when the disciples were also in another storm. And then yeah. Jesus was was walking on water. Mm -hmm. And it says this, it says he was intending to walk by. Yeah. So I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. So he was just gonna walk by. Him. He mm -hmm. knew they were in trouble and he was just gonna walk by him because he had a mission. He was actually going to the other side. Right. And I don't know if he could have gotten there faster walking or in the boat, but but Jesus was, he said, I, he was intending to walk by. I thought that's insensitive. But really what mm -hmm. he's saying is this. Jesus is the word. The word is going by. It's up to us to recognize it. Mm, grab grab it, a hold of it. Grab a hold of Ooh, it. Stir it up. That's good. Wake up the word. Mm. Wake up the word. 
that's so, so that's funny. what the prophetic push is. The prophetic push is you, you've got to, if you don't have a word and don't you don't have a promise, yes, but if you don't have one, you really don't have much to stand on. Yeah. Peter was able to walk on the water because he saw Jesus standing on the water right. and he trusted him as, 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 as the, as a promise. Mm -hmm. When he took his eyes off of him, that's when mm -hmm. he's going to sink. But the truth right. is, is that if you don't have a promise, you don't really have much to stand on. So right. I, I'm, I'm encouraging but when you, you do have a promise when and you, you do. keep your eyes on that promise, the word of God, then even stormy waves and right. wind, the stormy waves right. will be firm beneath your feet. Like it won't, it won't shake you. It won't move you. It won't take you from that position of right. uh, standing firm on that promise, on the word of God. The, the, the word, when you wake it up, remember, they yeah. went down the wake boat. Jesus was fine. Mm -hmm. like the, the, they were perishing, but Jesus was asleep. Many people say, why was he asleep? Because he was tired. <laughs> yeah, he was, <laughs> he was human. He was walking all day. He walked mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. So he was tired. But, 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 but the key is, is that, that, that they went down and they, and they woke the word up. And yeah. so this is what a lot of maybe people or Christians don't do is they, they don't go down and get the word. They, they, don't, they don't get them up. Mm -hmm. they, don't get, they don't get that word that they know is true up, whatever, in whatever situation, dire situation yes. that they're in. So he gets up. I love it. He got up and says here, uh, he rose and then he came and simply rebuked the one and said, peace be still, peace be still. Mm -hmm. And then he was, but really was saying them, listen, you guys, I'm going to do this for you uh, this time. Yeah. But um, it's up to you now. Like, like mm -hmm. I'm giving you authority. I'm showing you something that you can do. Just like God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy. I could do it, mm -hmm. but I want to show you how to do it. So he yeah. said, Ezekiel, you go ahead and prophesy to the bones. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, disciples, you go ahead and say, peace be still. So this is what I know about when, about the word. Is that when you're praying God's word, um, your your I, I call it a plea. Really, mm. I'm I'm going to say that that yeah. they went down and they were they were pleading for their life, and I think that's okay. When you when you mm -hmm. get to the place where you're you're saying, man, you're this desperate. is a, this is a desperation yeah. plea. Listen, your plea can change your surroundings. You, I don't think your plea. I don't think our pleas, our, our prayers are called to change people's will. Like, I'm not here to manipulate a will, right. somebody's will. God doesn't even do that. Mm -hmm. But he's telling you, say, listen, you can change your surroundings. But it's very important that that not only change your surroundings, but also change the, what's inside. inside me, too. Because yes. they were fearful and afraid. And, right. And, but, they needed the peace on the inside, too. Yes. Right. They, right, both ways it happens. Mm -hmm. But um, but your prayer, getting the promise of your prayer, will actually give... Um, We'll, we'll give the opportunity for the surroundings to change. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to wake up the word or the, or, or the, that, that word that you got. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to wake up prayer because mm -hmm. yes. really they were doing the same thing. When you go and meet, they were, they were meeting with Jesus down there. He was asleep, but really that that's all that prayer is, is, is it's a meeting with Jesus. And then there's a there's conversation. Mm -hmm. There's a conversation that happens. That's yes. really what prayer is. That's yeah. why you can pray with your eyes open. Right. This is this is prayer. Right. You think about it. We're it's, talking about we're talking Jesus. about Jesus. We're talking about the word. God's with us. Yeah. We're God's actually right praying, but He's we're talking listening. at the same time. Yeah. Because so, we're listening to to the Holy Spirit along yeah. the way. Yeah. So communication. Yeah. So so what is what is God saying? The, you know the words that we're that we are talking about. Like what is your prophetic word? What are you believing for? Um, or maybe you lost it. Maybe maybe you maybe think like, well, I, I don't even know where Jesus is. He's mm -hmm. asleep or the word's asleep. Yeah. But God wants the word to work. The Bible says this. He watches over his word to perform it. Mm -hmm. He wants to see his, his word work. But yeah. it's up to us to wake it up. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you wake up the word. You wake it up in prayer. And what happens is you, you start to wake up a promise. By the way, God's mm. word can't do anything until you wake it up, mm. right? Yeah. God's word, God's word can't do anything until you wake it up, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's waiting for us to grab a hold. Just like he just like that said he was he was intending to to walk by them in the storm, right? But he said, "Well, man, grab hold of it." But they cried out, "It's mm -hmm. a ghost!" At least they 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 were, you know, making some sort right. of a mm -hmm. movement towards them. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it lies dormant. Because again, God, the Bible says God watches over his word to perform it. Hmm. So if some people have lost hope in the storm, 
and now they live in the storm. And and all they have to do is go wake up. Right. Jesus, wake yeah. up the word. Does that make sense? Also, with Jesus walking by and they thought it was a ghost, I mean, is it safe to say that sometimes your promises look completely different than you expect it to? And it might cause you to be a little bit afraid because it's so like shocking and unexpected. The way that you're seeing you know, the word of God, mm -hmm. it might, it might be completely different. It's not always like roses and unicorns. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and, you know, you, you know, what's interesting? lately I've been hearing a lot of things like there's a storm coming and there's a battle coming, but you know what, you guys, it doesn't make me scared. I'm hearing these things that normally they are like a well, shocking word or like a shake it up kind of word, but it may, it, I know that God's voice me, it means that there's victory coming, that there's new land that's going to be conquered, that there's people going to be set free. Okay, you know. So let's let's so, talk about this. Let's segue into this. Okay, yeah. we just talked about the storm. We talked about the 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 disciples waking up the word, yes. waking up the promise. Yeah. You know, drawing Surprise close to Jesus. And now, what was really what was the whole point of that? The whole point of that was to teach him something. But there was a greater point, and that mm -hmm. is where were they going? They were actually to heading the to the other side. Where was the other side? A demon-possessed man, mm -hmm. a demon-possessed man who had a legion of demons who had, yeah. that's probably a thousand demons right. in him. Right um, and, and right. It was and, needed. Yes, not mm -hmm. only for him, for the whole city. That's true. Because if, if you, now think about this. If you had a demon-possessed mm -hmm. man living in your neighborhood, I guarantee you, you would think about him day and night. Even if you, even if you knew he was restrained with um, shackles, you would be thinking about him all the time. You, you, you wouldn't let your kids. You, you would be restrained. Like you would be restricted to go out and play. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the whole city was always thinking about this demoniac. Yeah. And the thing is, they, they were, they really didn't care about him as long as he didn't bother them. Yeah. They, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't. So they, they were like, let's leave it. Let's leave him alone. Leave him there. We won't bother Let him. Cut him. He won't bother us. Right. Just, just they didn't care. But you know who cared? Jesus. Jesus. So mm -hmm. Jesus had a mission, mm -hmm. and you just said that. Mm -hmm. So I would say, what you do is, when you wake up mm -hmm. the promise, you wake up the power of yeah. God. And so, mm -hmm. and, and he had a mission. There it is. Hey, we're back. Sorry, we had a poor connection for a second. So, <laughs> so that but but his goal was to get to the other side because there was a demon possessed man. Yes. By the way, this is what I know. Freedom was on. The nobody, other side. nobody like I, nobody that we know in that town. Mm -hmm. All right, called Jesus on the phone and said, "Hey, will you come speak at our town today? Um, we, <laughs> we're we're having some. We just we're, we want you to come here and, and share the word. Nobody asked him to come, but God did. Mm -hmm. So he did it." In a town that 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 really, as you as you know, did not invite him, but but he knew mm -hmm. that who was inviting him, that right. demon possessed man. Because if you read that story, it's amazing. Yeah. He comes and he runs um, to Jesus and he worshiped him. Now, this is what I think is powerful. It shows you how powerful our free will is. Mm -hmm. Even though he was possessed by a thousand demons, maybe I only have one or two. Maybe yeah. you have, you know, or may, or, <laughs> no. I think it was like. Two thousand or five thousand. Could be. That's what a legion. But was. he was he was so bound by this thing that it says that he ran to Jesus and worshipped him. So when we think of like, oh, I can't do it, I can't pray, I can't do this, it's too hard. You know, that's not even true. And I'm saying it's really tough. But the truth is, your free will yeah. is so powerful that you can over you can make a decision that actually tells three to five thousand demons no. So he worshipped Jesus. He 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 could have just ran the other way, but he ran and worshipped Jesus because he knew. He knew it, that that guy in his heart would invite Jesus. Right. Now, the crazy thing is, when that whole thing happened, when that was done, mm -hmm. the townspeople, this is really what I want to say about this, the townspeople, all right, this is interesting. Right. The demoniac gave his will. Mm -hmm. The townspeople did not. Right. Because they wanted him he to He upset the status quo. He, he upset. Did. The people and the way that they had things. They told Jesus. Their money yep. was good. Their income. Yes. They told their Jesus business. to leave. But all of this started, remember, all of this started by waking up the word. It all it all starts. When Ezekiel was told to prophesy, he was to wake up that prophetic word, speak it into right. that dire situation to wake it up. Yeah. So that's the whole idea behind this whole prophetic push is mm -hmm. what is God saying to you? 
Yeah. What's the word that you're going to have? I, I can't give you a word for you. You have to find out what you're frustrated about. You have to find mm -hmm. out what you need to pray. Yeah. By the way, if you're only praying for, for somebody else, that, that might be, that's a good prayer, but you need to look inside you yeah. and say, what, what is it that's, that's hindering you, mm -hmm. right? What's causing you to be this way or that way, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. get that word in you. Right. True. Wake it up. Wake it up. Yes. Speak it out. You're going to see it. Um, yeah. So this morning in a mentor meeting with a couple of my girls, which some of the, uh, I think one of them's on here. Um, we talked I'm on about, here too. You're talking about me? you're on here too. I'm you're my girl. girl. You're my gal. <laughs> um, we talked about waking up also and how God is waking up the body of Christ. And we talked about the, um, the 10 bridesmaids and that they all fell asleep. That's true. And, but they all woke up when the trumpet call sounded. So there is like right now in the body of Christ, there's like a trumpet call that's sounding. God is announcing something. God is uh, saying something is happening. The bridegroom is coming. <laughs> He's coming so soon. Wake up. He's calling us to wake up. Rise up from the dead. Rise up from your darkness. The, the tomb that you've been in, the, the darkness that you've been stuck in, the right. um the, your soul uh, bondage that you've been stuck in. Wake up, rise up. And so, but only five of them got to actually uh, participate in what the bridegroom had planned. Because planted. they, they were, filled up their lamps. Yes. They put the, now here they we go. Ready ahead of they time. put the effort in. Yes. Like like the, the, this push is, you know, prayer is work. Yeah. Just like faith is. Like it's mm -hmm. actually, it's, it's work. Yes. It's a work in a sense where you got to go ahead and put the work in. Yeah. You've got to, You've got to take some time right. and, and just, just pray, communicate with God and start yeah. speaking those things out. Mm -hmm. um, Get in the word, fill yourself up. You got to have that when you're, yes, as you're waking up, it's a call to action. And, and so right. only some are going to be ready for and action. If, right. And if a guy <laughs> with 3000 demons can take his free will, his strong will yes. and push his way towards Jesus and fall to the Bible says he fell down and worshiped Jesus. Mm -hmm. And but I, I don't I don't think it was the de the demons. Yes, they'll bow down, but it was this guy's will. He, his body was he was taking his body that was controlled by mm -hmm. the demons. He was saying, "No, I got to get to Jesus," and he worshipped him. So yeah. that just says that we have such um, God has given us such a, a, a power in our free will yeah. alone mm -hmm. that we can determine ourselves um, to to press through. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and 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 see what and see God work right right run to Jesus yes oh sorry I just closed this whole thing um so God says this he says in Jeremiah 112 three versions I'm alert and active watching over my word to perform yes. it he says I will uh he says for I'm ready to perform my word mm -hmm. for I'm watching to see my that my word is fulfilled I'm watching to make sure that my message to you comes, comes true, true. He's going to do it. But you guys, so it's up to us to wake up that word, stir it up on the inside of us, and to let it do the work that it has to do on the inside, and then it will change the circumstances around. How do you stir up the word uh, when well, you're I get, sleepy? When I'm sleepy? Or when, when you sleepy. feel like seriously, yes, like having, you know. Yeah. I have to, well, I have to purposely be in the word, which yes. I am every yep. day. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, naturally, right. it just stirs up on the inside of me. I also pray. I pray in the spirit a lot. That will stir up, stir up the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. inside me and gets me thinking on things of God. Worship. Um, worship definitely does it. I love mm -hmm. to worship. Yes. Worship is a big one. Just mm -hmm. stir it up. Right. Make it up. And, and I think, too, when you, when you feel dry and you feel like, oh, gosh, mm -hmm. not much is happening, you got to make a decision and say, I don't want to live this way. I'm going to wake up. Yes. I'm going to be a light. I'm going to, and sometimes just doing something practical. Like I, I yeah. would say, go, you know, text somebody an encouraging word. Like yeah. th this is what I do. When I start yes. feeling a little dry, I start preaching a message to God. I'd start, I just start preaching. And after, mm -hmm. as I preach, I'm like, oh gosh, okay, this is good. I'm getting it out. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it, it starts uh, waking, it wakes me up. Right. Just make a decision and be intentional. We talked about that this morning too, mm -hmm. that um, this is a season where God's calling his people to be very intentional and purposeful, that people who um, just are going along, we might be like those five virgins that didn't get to participate in the next thing, the next season, you know, this next level of True. freedom, because we are not being intentional. Like, if we are very intentional about what God is doing in us and what God wants to do through us, and we are very intentional and yes. purposeful about, Lord, I don't want to leave behind any of the promises of God, any of the right. purposes and plans that you have for me, God. I want to yield to you in every area. I want to say yes to you, God, in every area, because uh, I don't want to forfeit any of those things that you have planned. And I don't want to forfeit the, the promises and the word that you um, have planted on the inside of me. So um, right. stir it up, but be very intentional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't just, uh, you can't just like walk along and, and, well, and expect and, it to happen. Right. And I wrote down here, not random prayers, but intentional, Intention. agreeable. Yes effective, fervent, mm, that's it. but prayers that have God's heart Yes. and, and, timing. and, and timing that's right good. now. So re really we're, what we're, what we're seeing yeah. is what we're saying is, man, mm -hmm. like what is the word bubbling out of you? You yes. know, if you don't have one, go get one. Mm -hmm. And really uh, you can get the word by figuring out what you're frustrated about. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, again, if you're frustrated in your marriage, mm -hmm. okay, don't, don't start trying to change his or her will. Like, right. Oh God, change him, make him more like that. Mm -hmm. No. Don't do that, um, but just just pray, pr prophesy to the marriage in general. Say, Lord, this marriage is mm. gonna is gonna we're gonna be doing great things for you, you. God. Mm -hmm. This marriage is gonna come to life. Yes. Um, Lord, we're gonna be one. Yes. God, we are gonna be united. I mean, you, just start. You've ordained unity for this marriage. Right. This God, marriage you've is ordained a light to the world. And restoration for this marriage. You've ordained us to be a ministry to other marriages. God, you're going to do it because that is who you are. Right. It's your character, Lord. Right. Don't pray. Make them take a shower. Yeah. Make them wear deodorant. <laughs> you know, make, make them love Jesus. Make them repent to me. You know, right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's witchcraft. Right. But, um, no. uh, so, but but make it, like like I said, don't don't be, be very specific. Mm -hmm. So whatever frustrates you, like it did Habakkuk or Ezekiel or those disciples, mm -hmm. they were frustrated Desperate. They, they were desperate. Mm -hmm. They woke up the word, yeah. woke up Jesus. And yeah. that's when the whole ball started getting going. That's when it started rolling right there. It doesn't mm -hmm. start. Again, if if you don't wake up the word, it lies dormant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything. Movement doesn't happen. Right. right. You got to wake it up. Growth won't happen. Yeah. Speak it out. Movement. Wake it up. Believe it. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So as... As Jesus was passing by, remember that they had to cry out. They had to almost like grab hold of Jesus, <laughs> cry out so that he stopped mm -hmm. and um, they could grab hold of him. And as they kept their eyes on Jesus, on the word, then they could, the stormy waves were firm beneath their feet. So there is a storm coming, but the promise of God is still true. He's going to bring you through to the other side where freedom is going to happen. Yep. But in the meantime, you've got to hold tight to the word of God and let it be firm beneath yeah. you. Yeah. And you know, I heard someone say, I love what this person said, there's a storm of God's presence. There's a storm of his glory. There's yes. a storm of the goodness of God exactly. coming. that God, God is is so much bigger than and, and by the way if you think about it haven't we all been um, been being prepared for anything that comes along in life any, yeah. any storm like don't be surprised with these Not fiery scary. trials so mm -hmm. but I do believe that that there is um, there is there's something there's something great mm -hmm. uh, coming there's a harvest yeah. getting ready yes um, it's huge yeah I see it like a firestorm I almost I wrote that one thing God showed me, he said, like, it's a firestorm of his presence, you know, and we think of fire sometimes as a bad thing, but it's a good thing. Like in the body of Christ, God's fire is his love and fire spreads just the nature of fire. It spreads. And so right. it's going to spread God's presence and his glory is going to spread across the earth like a firestorm, you guys. And we get to spark it. We get to be those ones who started. So, so wake it up, wake up the word. Stir it up, mm -hmm. speak it out, take action. All right. Amen. You want to pray for them?
Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right, Lord, we <laughs> thank you for, Lord, we know that we, we can't do this completely in our own strength. We need the power of your Holy Spirit to wake us up, to, to Lord, give us the nudges and stir us, Lord. But, and I know our part is to, is to pray and it's to praise you and it's to, um, Lord, uh, just, just grab a hold of those promises. So what I pray, God, I do pray for like a supernatural thing that happens with people, Lord, that, that they would, they would be, they would have a holy frustration that they would, they would figure out that, that whatever's not going right, whatever's dead inside them, that they would, they would uh, have that revived by declaring God in them, God, what needs to come back to life. Maybe a dream needs to come back to life. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, uh, you know, uh, what's been hindering it is, is bitterness. And we want to, we want to, we want um, Lord uh, forgiveness to come to life in that person, mm -hmm. God. So we just pray for that, God, just uh, open up our hearts, wake us up in Jesus name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um, while Dan was praying, I just saw this little vision of, um, it's a plug, a cord with a plug and it just, it was unplugged. It just needs to be plugged in. Like you have access to the power of God. You have access to his powerful promises, his word, all of that. that I guess the waking up is the plugging it in. You should just plug it in and then the power can flow freely. So I don't mm -hmm. know who that is. If you feel like you've just been lacking power lately, you um, don't feel like you're on fire. You wish you were, <laughs> you know, and um, God says you have it right there available to you, but it's the plugging in, I guess it's the waking up of, of that word. Like you have to take some action to stir up the word on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Whoever that's for, just grab hold of it. But anyways, um, I also see desperate situations turning around because you are praying those yes. prayers that you've never prayed before. Like yes. impossible situations are an opportunity for God to do a miracle, and he wants to do that for you guys. Mm -hmm. We love you, and yeah. we'll see you um, next Monday at least, uh, <laughs> if not before. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you guys want to share this video, that would be awesome. Okay? We'll talk Take to you care. soon.